Welcome to Timberland Farms. Behind me is my 1998 and a half Dodge Ram 2500 with the 24 valve Cummins. I was gonna go do a stone delivery with a dump trailer behind the truck and I had no brakes. So let's get that fixed today. So right here is my master cylinder and my brake booster is behind that. It's a hydro boost system, runs off the power steering system. Uh, right off of the master cylinder, you got two lines that come off of that and they go to the ABS module right here. So it's the line that goes in between the two here that, have, that has blown, it's all rusty. All the other lines on the truck have been replaced by me because I ran into this issue. And I thought I got them all, apparently I missed a couple. So we're gonna get them taken care of. So I'm not sure what size they are. Possibly a half inch. Nope, smaller than a half inch, bigger than three eighths. Oh, well there's your problem. Yeah. It's bigger than that one, smaller than this one. What's an in-between? That's gonna round that off. Ice grips. <laughs> Probably didn't already uh, spread that down with penetrating lube, did you? Nope. We need one adjustable hammer. Let's go get an adjustable hammer. It's not 11 millimeter either. How about 12? 12 is the money. I don't know oh, which. Tighten it first. Sometimes that helps. You're twisting the. Oh, I never mind. You say you're twisting the line, but you can just twist it right off. Yeah, I'm replacing the line. The. Yep. Sorry, I'm just trying to save. No, we'll replace. That's what I do with this truck. No, so, I mean, I was thinking a couple times I've done like wheel cylinders. I don't want to replace the line. But yeah, when the line's blown, just screw it. It's coming off good now. A sixth of a turn at a time. <laughs> That's why, uh, actually, the best way to do it is cut it off with a set of dikes, put a ratchet on it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Probably should have done that. It's okay for the other one because you still got. All this. But once we get this fixed, I'll take you guys along for the ride of uh, actually getting the stone delivery and taking that to the customer's house. That one broke free. Now the ABS pump. Whatever the heck this thing is. Uh-oh. There we go. That one came off nice. Wow. That's impressive. Well, I beat you. Dang. This came off really nice. Oh, wow. You got all the... I can't even use these to put it back on. Nope. Oh well, it was worth a try. And this one just fell out. Oh, I'm used to them being a lot more difficult. It's nice and short. If we can fish this out of here, then we can rebend it the same shape without if we don't mangle this up too much. Almost got it. Tangle up and everything. There we go. You got your head in there. Oh. Got it. But there we got one line out. Nice and crusty. I'm sure this is the one that is blown. But we'll be able to resave these nuts and put them on. Those are different flares. We're gonna have to do something different about those flares there. Those are like bubble flares instead of double flare. So this is the new replacement brake line. This is a copper nickel brake line instead of the steel brake line. So it bends much, much easier. It is also much easier to kink too. So we're gonna wanna add on that half inch that we cut off on the end of it, maybe a little bit extra too, and then bend it there. You can just bend it with your hands. Remember, don't kink it. And then we're gonna go from this point here, down here, and bend this the opposite direction. Nice sharp 90 degrees without kinking it. So now we have that part, and then we can cut it. 
The copper nickel brake line does not rust, unlike the steel brake line. It's much more forgiving to bend by hand. So you don't need a tubing bender, typically. I'll have to bend this straight again so, so I can get this cut. All right, so here we have our flare tool. And then we'll take our topper here, put that on top. We made sure that our nut is in the correct location. Wrong tool. We need this guy. Much nicer if you have this set up in a vise. And then we'll crank on this until we seat this completely flat. And there's our bubble flare. That is completely flat. And I'm gonna open this guy back up again. And we can compare that to the original flare which I think it will just squish down on its own. That is a very uniform flare, that's what we're looking for. You do have to know on these 98 and a half Dodge Rams that the threads are different for varying size, the sides of your line. Now I had to bend this straight in order to get that to fit in the crimper, now we can bend that around again. All right, there's one side. This side we have to go around and ream. We can install our nut. This one's got tape on it, not allowing it to go inside. Also, don't put your nut on backwards. I have done that before in the past. Here's our crimp tool. And then we take our guide. So we want to get our line to be flush with the top of this guy here. Which is the line needs to come up a little bit. And of course I just dropped it. And now we're flush. Set that down. Lock this into place. And it didn't hit the ground. Where did it go? Can we shake the truck? Will it fall out that way? Uh, tip it on its side. Yeah, we'll tip the truck on the side, see if we get it to fall. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It's on top of the transmission bell housing. Oh, no. Let's see if I can fit my arm all the way down there. 
All right, we're gonna tape this to your hand. Alrighty, we need to top off the old stop sauce reservoir before we bleed. That's full. Let's see if we've got like a meniscus popping up over the top. And it's gonna make a mess. Yep. Spilling out. All right, when you bleed, bleed your brakes, you wanna start from the farthest point from your master cylinder to the closest point. So on this truck, we're gonna start off on the passenger side rear, driver side rear, passenger side front, and then driver side front. Uh, wheel cylinders in the rear, we're gonna bleed those. We got a pump and then hold. And when I'm holding, he will crack open the brake bleeder or I will crack open the brake bleeder. His foot will go to the floor. And once his foot's to the floor, I'll close the bleeder off and then he'll continue to pump it. And then I'll tell him to hold it and so on and so forth. I'll take you with me. I'm gonna have to double wrench this. The pedal goes to the floor, doesn't it? All right, pump it. After each wheel, we are going to fill the reservoir back up again. Hold it. Pump it. Hold it. I'm not seeing any air coming out of these. We'll move on to the other side. I'll do that in the background. You guys won't have to watch. All the wheels are the same. Just do it in the order of passenger rear, driver's rear, passenger front, driver's front. Well, that concludes this part of fixing the brakes and stuff on the truck. I wanna give a special thank you to Noah for helping me bend those brake lines and get the old ones off and get the new ones on for me. I didn't film the part of putting them on because we were kind of in a rush. He got called into work. So he put the brake lines on for me after I flared them and all that and he helped me bend them. And then I waited for my girlfriend to get home and she helped me bleed the brakes. So this is her first time ever bleeding brakes so I had to explain it to her for pretty in depth. But we got it. The brake pedal is really hard but we could close this chapter up call that a wrap and we're going to fast forward to tomorrow for me when we're going to go get a load of stone with this truck. I don't typically haul with this. I usually use my fourth gen Cummins but that is in the shop right now under warranty. It's got a tiny little oil leak. I mean this thing's got massive oil leaks. It's got 300,000 miles on the clock. It's got a lot done to it and it leaks out of everywhere but since that other truck's still under warranty, I want to get that fixed while well, it's still under warranty. So I don't have to deal with it uh, five years down the road. So let's get this thing loaded up with uh, four tons of gravel. Here's for a blooper because this dummy right here uh, forgot the GoPro under the hood. Right, Timber? Ugh. Oh, look at that, it's still hooked up. Yeah, I forgot the GoPro under the hood. Now let's close this chapter and get four tons of gravel. Touch down, third, fourth, and then we can go into reverse. Start off in second gear. I have to stop and get a drink. Here we are, we're unloaded off to the stone quarry to go get a load of uh, 
crush number two of stone. We're gonna get four tons today. Yep, there it went. Tip over. And it tipped over again. You're gonna have to leave it. Sure, we're all the way on the scales. We're at 10,600 pounds. Wait for a green light. Mm -hmm. and, then we... and we're gone. All right, we're all loaded up. We got four tons of uh, number two crushed stone. Wait for this to wait to start. Crank it up. Alrighty, here's what you do the GoPro. That concludes this video we made it home safe and sound and boy does this truck pull and more importantly it stops and it stops pretty pretty good for not having a trailer brake controller which is in the mail this is the first time i've actually towed with this truck normally i just use my fourth gen 2018 6 7 cummins instead of this 98 and a half 24 valve 5.9 liter cummins so it has new front brakes it has new rotors calipers 
um, new wheel bearings. I also did the U-joints on the wheels at the same time. And then about a year ago, I put new drums on it, new shoes, new wheel cylinders, and uh, new hardware in there. So the rear axle's all set. Off camera, I adjusted the rear shoes so they had a little bit more uh, give to them. You saw that we fixed the brake line on there, put a copper nickel brake line in there, so that's all fixed. Put some new stop sauce in there, got it to stop good, new stop sauce. But thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, stay tuned for more, and if you're local, I highly suggest you like our Facebook page, we'll be posting regular deals and everything, what we're doing. Like we just did a stone delivery today and we also offer dumpster rentals if you want to take the dump trailer that we have here. It's a 12 yard capacity dump trailer. I drop it off at your house for one week and you fill it up with whatever, whatever you want as long as it's, there's no TVs, no tires, no nothing hazardous or anything like that. But household garbage, construction debris, anything you, can, you name it can go in there and I'll get rid of it for you. We also deliver mulch. We can haul up to about 12 yards of mulch, four tons of gravel, four tons of crushed stone, do all sorts of different things with that. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Oh, as a teaser, the next video is going to be the Case 580 backhoe. I don't know if you remember that from last year. I waited all winter for this and the weather's finally getting a little bit nicer where we can work on that without uh, losing our fingers from frostbite. But hopefully we can get that backhoe off of the tractor, split the tractor in half, and redo the clutch pack in the shuttle assembly. And while I'm in there, I'm gonna go in there and put in a new torque converter. Might as well, I'm already in it. I don't wanna have to do it twice or three times. I've already had to do the engine twice now. I put it in there, drew it in with the bolts, cracked the block, pulled the engine back out, took it to a friend's shop. He actually runs a uh, boat shop and they repair boats and everything. And apparently it's a frequent thing where people don't winterize their boats and the water gets left in the engine from, you know, the water, the, the ponds, lakes, and whatever people boat in. And it cracks the engine block and they weld it back together. They, he has the know-how that I don't. I mean, I can weld, but that's a daunting task that I don't want to get involved with. So that is fixed. We did the engine. We did the radiator. We still have to do hydraulic cylinders and hydraulic lines. We're going to do hydraulic lines as they go. And we're going to do hydraulic cylinders and we're going to rewire them. We rewire the tractor. Sorry. Jeez. It's been a long day. So this should be coming in the next video or the following video. I do have a slight teaser video that I have yet to release because I don't think I had the whole thing. I'm going to post it anyway as it is. That'll probably be next Wednesday. So this will be Sunday's video and then the following Wednesday at 5 p.m. will be the teaser for the Case 580 backhoe. Get you guys up to speed on that. And then Sunday 9 a.m. is when we're going to release the actual of us working on the backhoe itself. But I'll catch you on the next one. I got things to do.